Hey guys, Mike here with everythingaboutconcrete.com. In this video, I'm going to show you how we pour a 60 by 40 foot garage floor that has three center drains in it. So we're going to slope the floor to all these center drains. And then on the side of the garage, we have another floor there that's going to be flat. That's just basically for storage. So if, if this is your first time watching me, my name's Mike Day. Uh, this is my YouTube channel, Everything About Concrete. And if you like concrete, if you love concrete, then subscribe down below. I come out with a couple videos a week to do with uh, concrete, mostly concrete flat work. And uh, you'll be updated on every time I put out a new video. So as you can see, we're, we're back in the truck right inside this thing to make it easier to pour for us. And on this job, you know, I'm working for the guy that did the, the concrete foundation. And, you know, there is a general contractor on the job. And the general contractor is kind of in control of, like, what we use for a mix. The type of reinforcement that goes in this slab. As you can see, there's no wire. There's no rebar. All the general contractor called for was fiber mesh in the concrete. So we're using a 4,000 PSI mix, three-quarter stone with fiber mesh in it and that's it I mean I just get hired to pour the concrete and finish the concrete um, the general contractor he see he's the guy way in the back there to the right with a white t-shirt on that's the guy that's running the whole job he's gonna he's gonna be building this garage so he's the one that has the say so and you know what we do and and what goes into the floor so as you can see we're attacking this floor when we do a floor like this with floor drains we do it in sections so we'll start like like this one we're starting up there on that side and we pour out about even with the center drain as much as that truck will dump we'll dump that truck right out there's 10 yards in there so I know if that floor is four inches thick that trucks gonna cover about 800 square feet now in this case it's about six inches thick so the truck is going to go about 500 square feet or so, between 500 and 550 square feet. So we'll just dump that whole truck right out. And as you can see, I got plenty of help here today on this one. We'll, then we'll get that screeded and bolt loaded. And then we'll move over to the next section. So from the outside of those walls to those floor drains, those black things in the middle of floor drains, the whole floor is going to slope towards those drains and then in between each drain there's three drains there in between each drain we're gonna we're gonna have a high point so the floor will slope down to the drain like we're screeding right now down to that floor drain right there and then as we move to the next drain that floor is going to slightly come back up a little bit and then back down to the drain so we're gonna have a high point in between each drain that way each bay of that garage will slope to the floor drain in that bay. So the second truck, you can see we're moving over to the other side. And there's a couple reasons we do this. One reason is just we try to keep the floor uh, pour going as even as possible from one end to the other. And what that does is is it also helps us finish the concrete easier when we go to power trial this thing it just makes the power trialing process a little bit easier also so there's a little bit of thought going into it whenever we pour a bigger floor you know how are we going to empty the trucks we're not going to just do it randomly and sometimes we're not going to do it you know what makes it easier to pour sometimes we'll do it based on what's going to make it easier to finish or to power trial and that's what we're doing here. I mean, we could have gone right down that one whole side there where we started and finished that whole side off. And, you know, on a floor of this size, this isn't, like, huge. That wouldn't have made that much of a difference. But it's just a little easier to finish coming down this way, going one side than the other side, and working our way back out the way we're bringing those trucks in. So we'll get this bay poured out with a second truck. And you can kind of see the slope in the floor, even there where Darren just put the, the screed down. Luke's shooting some grades now with the grade stick. 
And so what we do is, you know, we'll, we'll check the outside top of that wall, concrete wall. And then in order to get a slope in the floor with that laser is we have to move the receiver up a little bit to get a slope in the floor and that'll make the concrete lower than the than the outside than the perimeter so if I want to drop the concrete an inch then from the outside then I have to move the receiver up an inch and that'll drop my grade stick down an inch I know it sounds a little it may sound a little confusing but it's it's as simple as that it's really easy to shoot slopes uh, in a concrete floor using a self-leveling laser like that that's that Topcon RL H5B that's the one I use all the time that's down in the description too guys if you want to check that out so the, you don't have to adjust the laser at all you only need to adjust the receiver on your stick to get the slope in the floor and you could you know whether it's concrete or if you're grading dirt or whatever it's it's the same it's the same principle so now we're getting that second truck dumped out. we back in that third truck in back on the other side now. And we'll start dumping the concrete with the third truck right where we stopped dumping that first truck. So we're kind of trying to keep the floor flowing as even as possible across a floor this size if we have multiple trucks. You can see Luke and Eric there are screeding down towards the floor drain to shorten that bay up they have a 14 foot screed there and then when they shorten that bay up a little bit they'll turn it and then screed down the drains right down the center of the drain Luke the one on the left is Luke in the gray shirt and I'm over there making pads on the other side with the grade stick and I'm adjusting it you know based on where I'm shooting the pad So here we are, we're screeding down the drain. In, in between those two drains, like I said, there's a little bit of a high point, so the floor comes back up a little bit, then back down a little bit. And we we don't want to just screed from drain to drain and keep it the same height from drain to drain because that potentially could mean water will sit in between the two drains. There could be a little puddle there. So we want to raise the concrete up a little bit in between those two drains. There was quite a bit of pitch from the outside to the drain. If I remember right, there was like three inches of pitch from the outside edge to the drain. So water should flow really good with this floor. And as you can see, we don't use, you know, screed pipes or I know some guys will, will put in these grade stakes and then they'll set a two by four on the grade stakes and they'll mag their pad to the bottom of that two by four and that's perfectly fine if that's the way you're taught. We just weren't taught that way. You know, we were taught to wet screed and wet pad everything. And that's what we do. And, you know, that's what we're really good at. So that's why we do it this way. And when we strike a pad, you know, in the wet concrete, it's accurate. I mean, we, there's four of us out there that can screed really good. So we're really careful when we screed that we have it right where we want it. And it may seem hard at first to do that, but it just takes practice, like anything with concrete. It takes a little practice doing it. Yeah, I know what I wanted to ask you guys. But, you know, for you guys watching this, if I was thinking of starting a program where if you guys wanted to start your own business like, like I have right here, you know, maybe not as big a crew, but maybe you and one guy or you and another guy, you know, how do you go about starting your own business, whether you're whether you're working for somebody else or maybe you're just you just like concrete and you want to, you have another job but you want to start pouring concrete how do you go about starting your own business what do you do where do you start you know if you guys would like me to come up with a program like that to teach you guys how to do what I do running a business like this you know let me know down in the comments if I can get you know say 20 of you or more then I'll come up with a plan to come up with a program to help teach you guys how to do that. There's, you know, there's a lot do more to it than just showing up here and pouring the concrete. You know, in, in each state might be different. In some states you might have to get licensed. In Maine, I don't, you don't need a license 
to start a concrete business. So anybody can just start one up just using your social security number and a DBA doing business as. Um, now I'm incorporated. I did that years ago, so I'm a C Corp. So I mean, I could help teach you guys about, you know, maybe how you should start, help teach you guys how to do estimating, invoicing, um, you know, taxes, just basically how to run a business like this and be profitable at it, be really profitable. Because if you run it right, you can make a lot of money doing concrete flat work like this. And there's a lot of different aspects to the concrete flat work business, you know, not just pouring floors, but between doing pool decks and sidewalks and stamp concrete, and then you can get into staining concrete, um, and then you can get into repairing concrete. I mean, it's a process. You, you don't try to learn everything at once, but you learn something, get good at it, and then you add something else to it. And then you never have to worry about not being busy. You're always busy because there's always a need for something out there if you're good at it. But the key is being good at it and, and minimizing mistakes. I mean, we all learn from our mistakes, but if you can minimize those mistakes and those mistakes don't cost you a lot of money, then you can be really good at what you do and really make a lot of money at what you do. So, you know, let me know down there in the comments if that's some type of program you guys would be interested in and I can start working on that and we can we can uh, get that going and get it started. I'd, I'd love to help you guys do that if if you guys want to, you know, be be in your own business for yourself someday. So we'll get that third truck dumped and I think we're on to the fourth truck now. You can see Abby's over there bow floating. Abby does a real good job bow floating. That's Abby's one, my daughter's best friend. I got my daughter in there helping. These were uh, their summer help. They go to college, but they decide to work for the summer and pour concrete and you know, for the 10 or 12 weeks I had them in the summer, they did a really good job. They were really hard workers. They they liked earning money. And uh, there's nothing wrong with that. That's how kind of we all start at some point. So we're going to get that last truck dumped and finish that the big part of that garage off. Remember, that I said that garage was 60 by 40. I don't know if you can tell just by looking at it, how it slopes to those drains. But there is pretty good slope in it. We'll get that last truck dumped out. I've got a couple other guys here helping today too. Um, th that's a, a foundation guy that helps us once in a while. You know, on some of our bigger pours. And I also do his concrete floors too. When he's got a, a big house or a garage he needs done. He likes doing the foundations but he doesn't like doing the floors so we come and we'll go do his floors for him. You can see Darren and Luke are going to straight edge that bay down. We've got T and Abby there puddling for him. We'll get that, uh, that truck set over to the other side. We can get that side filled in and get that garage finished off. So remember guys, if you if you like this kind of stuff, you know, go ahead down there and hit subscribe. Hit the little like button too, and it, it helps my videos rank a little better in YouTube. If if you guys are commenting, if you're hitting the like, and obviously if you're subscribers, that's a great thing too. I really appreciate it. I think I'm up over 18,000 subscribers now, so I, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you watching. I appreciate you being, you know, uh, helping out with these videos by liking them and commenting. It's, uh, it's made the channel grow really fast this year, and we want to keep it growing, reach more people, help more people, and that's what I'm all about. If I can help you guys out any way I can, uh, that's e either whether it's just for a single little job you need to do, or if it's learning the craft, learning the trade to help make yourself more valuable for who you work for, then that's what I'll do to, to help you guys. We're going to get that last bay poured out and then we'll move over into that that little storage section here on the side and get that thing poured out. But as you can see how we attacked this floor, you know, we started up on one side, dumped that truck out, and then the second truck we brought into the other side and then we just kind of rotated sides for each truck. 
and that keeps the concrete from uh, get, getting what we call a cold joint it keeps the, the first trucks edge from setting up too fast and it, it helps make the finishing process a little bit easier so you go from one truck to the other when you finish hopefully this stuff dries pretty even you know the quicker you dump it out the more even it's going to dry when you finish if it takes if it takes hours and hours to dump a floor like this then it's going to make it just harder to finish also but you know we're usually pretty fast we can dump a truck out a 10 yard truck out in you know a matter of minutes really and it's not that hard to do that once you do it a lot kind of in the shade here too this morning this is probably like we probably started this job at 6 in the morning or 6.30. That's when we usually start in the summer. So the sun's pretty low. And it's got a bunch of trees to get up over today. So we'll get this thing all poured before the sun even gets up on it. That's what we like to do in the summer. Get them in early. Makes it easier. Not pouring right in the direct sun, right in the direct heat. We get pretty hot temperatures here in Maine in the summer. It'll get up into the 90s sometimes a hundred you know especially in July and August but that's about it those two months are as about as hot as it gets and then uh, September and October are usually pretty comfortable months for us in May and June are usually pretty comfortable but that's it I mean we got six maybe seven months of really good outside work and then we got five months where it's it's not so good. It starts getting cold, uh, snowy, rainy. So we got to deal with a lot of bad weather up here trying to pour concrete. It makes it pretty difficult. So we try to squeeze as much of our work in as we can, you know, in those six or seven months, working as much as we can. Because we do get, you know, in Maine, we do get time off in the winter. Sometimes it's just too cold to pour, you know, or it's just too, the weather's too snowy or whatever. If let me know if you guys live in a climate kind of like that let me know down in the comments and let me know what state it is too if it's similar to Maine um, I mean I know New Hampshire is going to be in Vermont's going to be up here in New England but what about you guys in the Midwest you guys out in the West and even in the South I mean what is your worst weathers your worst weather wise for pouring concrete let me know alright so we're going to come down this this storage Part of this garage is about 14 by 40, I think was what they wanted. It's got that one garage door here in the front. So we'll get this last truck poured out. And then we'll have a little bit of time in between before we have to go back and start finishing. Start tapering our garage doors down, magging our edges, stuff like that. I'll have part two of this video coming out next where I'll show you how we power trialed this, how we finished it, and how we saw cut it and all that, but that'll be on the, another video. That'll be coming out after this one. So we're just getting this guy mixed up. You know, I think we started dumping him and it was a little too dry. So we gave him a little drink of water. Get the slump up to where we like it. We usually like pouring about a six inch slump. That makes it good and workable for us. Most of you guys know that I pour with a, uh, I know we'll give it him a little bit more with a water reducer in the concrete so the water reducer allows us to pour a little bit looser slump without adding a ton of water so instead of him having to add let's say 20 or 30 gallons of water to get it to the slump we want he might only have to add five or ten and then with that water reducer in the mix that helps make it seem like he might have added 20 or 30 gallons and then that way that doesn't take away from the strength of the concrete uh, it doesn't weaken the concrete so we can pour it at a good workable slump and still have you know the 4,000 psi concrete that we were shooting for and again this all has fiber mesh in it it's got we use what what's called a microfiber so they're very very hard to see uh, they don't they don't uh, inhibit the finishing process at all you can barely even see them when you're finishing versus some of the fibers that are real rigid they'll poke right up through the surface when you're finishing and it just doesn't really look that good
as you can see we're getting this thing all poured out this this particular floor here was relatively flat it didn't really have any pitch to it that's what they wanted it's always good having a big crew it's nice having a few extra hands you know we pour me Darren and Luke there's usually just three of us except for in the summer like this we get a couple months where we get some summer help and then one of my other guys there he's a school teacher so he's off for a few weeks in the summer he can help and he's worked for me for over 20 years so he knows what he's doing and then we can pull in you know a few guys that we network with that are in business for themselves but you know they'll come help us for an hour or two pour something every once in a while so whenever we can get some extra help in the summer we take it because usually there's just three of us doing something like this and if it was if it was you know may or june or if it was september or october it would be just me darren and luke doing the same thing just the three of us and you know it that gets hard after a while doing it day after day every day of the week so it's nice having some extra hands every once in a while Yeah, we got this thing almost screeded out. I'm going up. I, you see me climb up the chute, scraping down the concrete. We're trying to trying to get as much concrete out of the chute as we can. So when he washes the chutes down, he doesn't leave a mess somewhere. These guys, you know, the concrete drivers that we work with, if they have concrete left in the truck, they'll just bring it back to the concrete plant. And they'll either make blocks out of it, or if it's not enough to make a block, they'll dump it in a pile, then they crush it after. They don't dump it on site. The only thing that gets dumped on site is what's left in the chute. So we generally try to scrape the chutes down and get it as close as we can so there's not a big mess for someone to clean up after. So that's it for that. I got that. We got that poured out. And you can see here in a minute, you watch, I'm going to eyeball that front board. And to me, it looks like that front board bows out a little bit. So we only put one kicker on it. And I just, I can't stand that when the board has a little bow in it. So what we're doing is we're scraping the concrete back. And we're going to straighten that board out, straighten that form out. So we should have put more braces on that board to start with. And that wouldn't have happened. I mean, the concrete's 12 inches thick right there. And generally, one form, one kicker like that will take care of that. But... For whatever reason it didn't, either the pin wasn't pounded in hard enough, the ground was a little soft there or something, so we'll get all that concrete moved back, we'll get that board scraped out nice and clean, and then we'll straighten that board out and put some more kickers on it, and then fill it back in. You know, you just, if you see something like that, you just can't leave it, even if it's, even if it's only like a quarter inch or a half inch bowed out, it just doesn't look good, and it's it's time to fix it is now you know you, you can't fix it after the concrete's hard so get it fixed straighten it out it only takes a minute or two and then just rescreed it it's not that big a deal so we'll get those kickers back on and we'll pull that concrete back in there and just rescreed that little section bow float it and then problem solved these things happen even to experienced people like ourselves I mean you just you think you take your you, you take for granted sometimes how easy something is when you do it every day and if it doesn't work out well just go back and fix it but don't just leave it so again guys you know let's let me know on that on that program about learning how to be in business for yourself especially doing concrete work if you want to do that comment down below if I get enough of you guys commenting about that, then I'll I'll figure out a way to make a program to do that. Um, it might be might be a program with a small monthly fee or something, because there's going to be a lot of time involved for me. But if there's any way I can help you guys with that, I'd, I'd love to do it. And again, thanks for watching. Go ahead down there and hit subscribe, hit the like button, and we'll see you on the next video, guys.